I, I always like to step back and say, well, what was here? You know, what was natural? It was all old growth forest, you know, 90 some odd percent of it with little beaver flowages and, you know, if, where were partridge? Where were robins, for God's sakes? Where were woodcock in the ancient forest? Right around the periphery of beaver flowages. That, that is really good early successional habitat. This the thing called the fur trade. It like drained a million wetlands or something for hundreds of years <laughs> across the whole continent. But that wasn't good for uh, the wildlife of North America. The return of beavers uh, to the landscape has just been a fascinating event. And we're so lucky that they didn't go extinct. There's a culvert in beaver damming habitat. And it, that's just, it's an automatic, it's a given. They're always gonna clog it. Every road is a, basically a giant man-made dam with a tiny hole in it. So it's like the beavers don't have to build a giant dam, it's already here. All they have to do is plug the little hole. It's so efficient for them. They save a lot of energy. They, they can store more fat to get through winter. So it's just a perfect situation. They love narrow outlets. And I think this has been happening here, you know, for many decades. It's been a battle with beavers. Of course, you know, without a high quality flow device, there's not much option. So this is the beginning of a new era. I'm Skip Lyle, um, president of Beaver Deceivers International in Grafton, Vermont. And uh, we're here on a flow device project in Westminster, Vermont. Uh, yesterday we, we framed up the receiver fence on the culvert and started to get our pipe system in place. So receiver fence on the culvert and a pipe system up there. So the square fence will be past those stumps. And uh, then we'll try to do a starter dam through there, and th through the low spot, and uh, maybe in front of the filter, then hope the beavers will follow our lead. And then, then you'll have a nice wetland here. It pre it'll prevent them, number one, from directly clogging the culvert. That's not enough because we want to control damming behavior. If we just did a simple fence and, and they dam, they'd dam around, they could have a huge dam right around it. And then they could start throwing stuff over the top of it. So the, it, it's, it's combined with a pipe system and that's designed to sneak water away from them and to hold the water down so they don't, can't make any progress in their damming efforts <laughs> around the initial fence. Humans would take one look at the system and know that they need to dam above the pipe. They, and beavers just don't do that. They don't, they don't step back and, and look at the big picture. Um, so they, they, they try to dam where they see this hole in this giant dam. They focus on that and we're, we'll be sneaking water away from them further upstream. And so it requires a big pipe. This is a really big watershed, but an 18 inch pipe is pretty huge. And then um, it re requires a really good filter on the upstream end of the pipe to filter water in and beavers out, to essentially sneak water, try to sneak it in, in, into the filter, then through the pipe and past the beavers. And it and also somehow sets the water level. Okay. I have to map the topography in my brain. You know, I, I often have to do that because you can't really see until you get in there and feel with your feet. Then you get a sense of where things can go and what the best strategy is. Guys, why, why we have to do this? They just do a lousy job at the factory. Check out these spot wells. See how they're brown? Oh, yeah. Every single one. I mean, that's, <laughs> the, that's the most critical part of the whole fence. I like to think big. You know, I don't, I don't want to just uh, beaver proof a culvert here and there. I, I always see this opportunity, and we're smarter than beavers, believe it or not. The things that we do, you know, we, the things that humans do, the technology, and, you know, so I know we can do it. And so I, I have this um, dream of just, you know, why don't we just beaver-proof Vermont? Why don't we not beaver-proof the U.S.? How about North America? I mean, then, then we could start to manage, once we protect the infrastructure, then we can start to manage beavers the way they should be managed, not as a pest, but as a, what I call a super species. They have phenomenal hydrological value. That's, that's just ignored by the term keystone species. And then, of course, these flowages are the most beautiful places on Earth and fascinating and dynamic. And so they have tremendous spiritual and aesthetic value.
You know, and every time a bad flow device is built and it fails, as thousands have, then we don't gain ground. We're actually losing ground, you know. And so we have to take it more seriously. You know, think of it as engineering, you know, and take it seriously and just do it. Well, all you guys are going to be flow device experts soon and beaver proof the world, but uh, it's going to be a, take time and it's going to be a transition process. And in the meantime, but we have to start the transition in a serious way. Yesterday we, we framed up the receiver fence on the culvert and started to get our pipe system in place. And today we're going to add a, a square fence filter to the upstream end of the pipe. You have to do some additional work on the receiver fence. And then we're going to build a starter dam to try to get the beavers to dam uh, just upstream from our, from our flow device in order to uh, have a nice little wetland here in addition to a protected culvert. And this is part of the defense too. If we can get the beavers to dam in an arc just above the beaver deceiver, that'll help because that'll, then their focus will be there. There's a dense road network. This is a rural state, and yet there's a dense road network. And, and the uh, culverts are always the first places that the beavers will dam. You know, it's just a perfect dam site because it's so small and, you know, a little bit of effort, and all of a sudden you have a habitat. I like to use fencing in a, in a wooden frame. I like to make it pretty well. So, so I'll, I'll make a bunch of posts, and we'll drive posts, and then we'll, we'll staple some fencing onto it and then we can we can start to put debris on the upstream side of it and uh yeah that hopefully the beavers they they just as with culverts they they, they like to look for places where they have it advantages and don't have to work as hard they're trying to be economical but they only they only dam in a small percentage of the landscape essentially um, low gradient areas on small streams mm -hmm. so they're damming today in the exact same places they dammed say for 10,000 years, between the retreat of the glaciers and the beginning of the fur trade. So it's a massive restoration event. And so at a regular beaver dam, all you need is a, f a filter and a pipe that goes through the dam. But at a culvert site, you have to also have a, a fence on the culvert to prevent beavers from directly clogging it. I call that the receiver fence because it receives the pipe system. The pipe system is also really critical. I very, very rarely just build a simple fence on a culvert because all the deceiving um, takes place in the pipe system. The starting point is to know that beavers don't think like humans. They don't do a lot of deductive reason. They're just very uh, myopic in responding to environmental stimuli. They don't deal well with stuff that's not part of their evolutionary history. So they don't look at a pipe and say, well, yeah, of course that's a pipe. Of course it's hollow. Of course the water's going through it. So thank God they don't think that way. If you eliminate the damning stimuli, you know, which you do primarily in the filter, and then also um, the length of the pipe helps because beavers are programmed to look for dam leaks in dams. But uh, it's, it's not easy. It's really an enormous challenge to build something that will survive, survive this, these incredibly harsh environments 
um, and, and be able to sneak water away from an animal that's been finding leaks for millions of years.